Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a great Sunday morning. Let's settle down. All right. Great to see everyone with a really happy face this morning. Really excited we can come together to worship Jesus together. Are you all ready? All right. Thank you. All right. Let's just... Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Hey, I just really want to uh, read a verse real quick. And I just felt like, wow, well, when I was reading this, I, I just feel with so much excitement about worshiping God. All right. And it's Psalms 150. And I just want to read from the Passion Translation. All right. And Psalms 150 said this, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His holy sanctuary. Praise Him in His stronghold in the sky. Praise Him for His miracles of might. Praise Him for His magnificent greatness. Praise Him with the trumpets blasting. Praise Him with piano and guitar. Praise Him with drums and dancing. Praise Him with the loud, resounding clash of cymbals. Praise Him with every instrument you can find. Let everyone everywhere join in the crescendo of ecstatic praise to Yahweh. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Wow, wow, I love this. I love this. Like, man, this is what worship is about. As we sing, we are giving Him worth. As we sing, we're, 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 we're telling God how amazing you are, how blessed I am to be with you. And, you know, as we come to, to uh, this morning worship, let's come with, with kind of a mindset that, wow, I'm not just singing songs. I'm not just you know, singing a, a worship song, but as I sing, I'm giving Him praise. As I sing, I'm giving Him worth because He's worthy. And we want to praise Him because we want to praise Him because of the breakthrough we see, but we also want to praise Him for the breakthrough that's going to come. Amen? So let's all close our eyes. Father, we just thank You for this morning that we get to come together in this place and we get to praise You, we get to worship You. And Father, we know that as our praise goes up, your presence comes down. And we, I just pray that this morning your presence will just surround us, that your presence will just fill us, that your presence will just energize us. Father, we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll pass this to the worship team right now.
know, this season as we come together, we just want to remember what Christ has done for us. That He came for you, He came for me. In Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and he will be called the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that you've come to give us peace. You've come that we might have peace. Oh, we bless you, Lord.
Oh, let his peace just come and guard your heart. Oh, no matter what uncertainties you may be facing, oh, let his peace just come. of the Savior, with the heart of the Father, you're all we need. You're here with the hands of the healer, with the power of your spirit. of your name every chain will break I know everything will change Jesus just the whisper of your name will silence wind and wave at the mention of your
You're the provider All I've ever needed Jesus, you supply You're here With wonder-working power Everything you breathe on Coming back to life At the mansion of your name every chain will break I know everything will change my Jesus just a whisper of your name the silence wind and wave at the mention of your name oh you are Oh. 
again that I may have lied. You resurrect again that I may have lied. You resurrect again that I may have lied. You resurrect again that I may have lied. Life abundantly. Amazingly, so good. Abundantly, amazingly, so good. Abundantly, amazingly, so good. Abundantly, amazingly, so good. Just come and consider, just come and consider the goodness of God in your life. That this entire year that He has brought you through, not by our own strength, not by our own might, but by His power, by the power of His Holy Spirit that has brought you through this year, that has brought us through this year. You know, amazing Savior, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you thanks in our hearts. If not for your grace that's brought us through, that the year is good because of you, because through every challenge you are there, holding our hands, guarding our hearts, guarding our minds. that everlasting peace that guards our hearts thank you Lord thank you Lord Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. Your fresh love just pour all over our hearts. Lord, we reconnect with your love right here, right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We open our hearts to you, God. Pour your love deep into our souls. Fill us to the brim. Fill us to the brim. Lord, we just receive. Your presence. Your peace. Pouring into our lives. Thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Wow, uh, I love those Christmas songs, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Christmas is a season where we remember that He came for us. Amen. He came to give His life for us so that we might live His life in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sokability Church. Good morning, everybody online. Good morning, everybody on site. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, I, I'm seeing some faces that I've not seen for some time, and it's really good to see you guys. Um, and, well, we, we are going to continue with Romans chapter 8. Uh, today, the uh, the last two sessions that I did, Romans chapter eight, we 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 were on this topic uh, called freedom in the spirit. Uh, today, the the topic is something different. The topic is is called uh, the title of today's message is from groaning to glory. And and in a few minutes' time, we're going to see why why that uh, that the. The title is that. So let's turn to Romans chapter 8. And let's start with verse uh, 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Okay, are you guys there? Yes? All right. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Uh, I'm going to read all the way to verse 30, all right? Yep. All right, so Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then as, as of God and join as with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we might also be glorified with Him. For I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility. Not willingly, but because of Him who has subjected it in hope. Because creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That's what the word liberty there is, freedom. Right? The glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For who does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself 
makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, for he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He predestined, these He also called. Whom He called, these He also justified. And whom He justified, these He also glorified. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, that's, that's a lot of verses, all right? That's really a lot of verses, uh, but, and there's a lot of content in there. Uh, it, it's, it, says, it, it says here that you and I, we have, do not have the spirit of, of bondage. That it's not the spirit of bondage that's on us, but it's, it's the spirit of adoption that we cry, Abba, Father, you and I are sons and daughters of the living God. Someone say, Amen. Amen. Um, the word bondage appears two times in, in, in this passage. Can you see? Right? One, it says, we who are sons of, of God, we, we are not to receive the spirit of bondage. And then it, it says again, uh, the word bondage appears actually in, in verse 21. It says creation. Creation is in a bondage of corruption. C creation is in a bondage of corruption. Uh, uh, it's a state of death, decay, chaos, disorder. And that happened from... From Genesis chapter 3, when, when Adam and Eve ate out of fruit, not only Adam and Eve put themselves under a curse, Adam and Eve put the whole creation under the curse, right? That, that, that the, the ground was cursed be, because of, of the sin of man. And, and, and from Adam and Eve's time till now, that creation had been groaning and mourning, groaning and mourning, waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. The word reveal is, is actually the same word where we, we, we get the word uh, apocalypse, by, by the way, right? Uh, apocal the, the, the word in Greek, apocalypse, really means an unveiling, an exposing, a revealing, a manifesting. The, the world and, and the whole of creation is waiting for you and I to arise, to, to discover our true identities in Him. And, and, and creation can never be free of the bondage of corruption until you and I know our identities to fulfill our destinies in Him. That's the glory. That's the glory that Paul's talk about. If you look at Romans, I mean, we've read through uh, uh, this, this passage. The word glory appears many times. The word glorify appears many times. There's a glory waiting, awaiting us. Verse 21, I read again. The creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious, glorious liberty of the children of God. Can you catch Paul's heart when he is he's writing this, this part of the letter? 
there's a lot of passion in it. There's a lot of passion in it. By the way, the word passion in the Bible and also in in ancient language and even in modern language, the word passion is tied to the word suffering. Do you know that? Yes? Yeah? Uh, When we talk about Passion Week, which is the last seven days, uh, of, of Christ when he enters Jerusalem and he gets crucified on the cross, Passion Week, yeah, is, is tied to the suffering of Jesus. The word, the, word Engl- the word English word passion comes from the Latin word passio. And, and it literally means suffering. That when you are passionate for something, you are willing to suffer for it to the point of death. And when when Paul writes this passage, he's writing with all his passion. Can you feel his heart? Because as he's writing this, he's, he's writing it feeling God's heart. It, 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 it's at, in verse 17, it says, And if children then, as, as with God and, and join as with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. You see, um, we live in a world that's not perfect. We live in a world that has been broken down. Yeah, we live in a broken world full of broken people, living broken lives, having broken hearts, experiencing broken relationships. Everything is broken. And, and the fact is, there's suffering in this world. Creation is suffering. And creation is groaning. But creation is waiting for the, the, the sons and daughters of God to discover our, our identities, our authority, our destiny. There are, there are three things in this passage uh, that is groaning. Number one, it says creation. And, and the interesting thing about that part is when it talks about creation groaning, verse 22, it says the whole, the whole creation, yeah, um, in Greek, it, it, it's literally two words, all creation, all right? All creation groans and labors with birth tanks together until now. If you look at the Greek, it, it is very... Uh, uh, it is more pre- it's more precise. It's even more precise than this. It, it says all creation groans as one and labors with birth pang as one. Get okay, you, you catch that? The whole of creation as one entity is groaning together as one. And the whole of creation, as one entity, is is pregnant with birth pangs. It's in pain. And it's having birth pangs. It's laboring as one. And and, and so here's the interesting thing about its description of suffering. 
it did not say that creation is groaning like a dying woman. You catch that? It did not say creation is groaning like a dying woman. I want to die. Like, oh! Yeah. No, all right. But creation is groaning like a pregnant woman. Very different. Do you catch the difference? <laughs> a pregnant woman is also in pain. I, yeah, I, 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 I don't, I, I cannot presume. I cannot imagine how that would look like or how that would feel like, right? But it's in pain. Ah! But <laughs> I don't want to break any glass here. <laughs> but that pain is a process that is leading to new life. Do you catch that? It's a suffering. That when, when yeah, who, who has given birth here? I've not, but who has? <laughs> Just raise your hand, yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Bless you, mother. Yeah. Yeah, bless you, bless you. Yeah, so... So, so you all, you all can understand. I cannot understand. Yeah, I can only understand. I can only try to understand here. But right, it's like when, uh, when, when you were pregnant, right? Um, like, were you thinking more of, wow, wow? I have to give birth, uh, very pain, very pain, very pain. The whole day, think, very pain, very pain, very pain. W- 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 was, it, was it like that? No, right? What do you think of? Quickly come up. Quickly come up. <laughs> Quickly come up. <laughs> Quickly come up. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, yours is real one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I'm trying to elicit the real information, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, there is an expectation, right? There is a, there's a hope. You, although when you are undergoing the, the birth pangs, there is, there's hope. And because there's hope, there's strength and motivation, and you push, 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 right? Because there is hope, right? The word hope appears six times in this passage, what we've read just now. See the difference between the suffering of, of, of a Christian and the a suffering with someone that's not in Christ is in Christ when we suffer, we, we know that there is an end game, there's purpose, there is hope. Or we're supposed to know lah. <laughs> because the fact is a lot of times when we are in that pain, and we are in the process, and we are suffering, we forget. <laughs> we forget the end game. We forget that we are pregnant. We, we, we forget that there's a baby to give birth. We are so caught up in the pain that we for, forget about the hope, about the glory. That is, oh, why, why am I, God, why do you put me in this place? Why am I suffering, God? (laughs) 
See, that's ha- what that happens to us all the time, right? But a, a pregnant woman, when when a, a woman at, uh, in labor, right? When you when you're in birth pain, ah, you you won't forget that you are having a baby, correct? Have you ever those who have who are who have been in labor before, like half a ah? Do you, do you forget why am I in pain? Ah! Any any anyone any mother here got like that? Huh? Temporarily forget you are having a baby. No right. <laughs> yeah, the, but the problem is, we are so aware of our physical reality that we lose awareness, lose sight, lose touch with our spiritual aware, uh, reality. The, the fact is, creation is, is, is in, in a state of birth pangs, but we as Christians are also groaning and moaning and we are pregnant with the destiny of God. In us, you you are pregnant with God's divine calling on you, and within you, you carry a divine burden. And with that, it is a passion that God puts in your soul. But sometimes we are so in pain that we forget what our purpose, what our passion is. We are too caught up in the pain that we, f- we forget what we are pregnant with. The difference between a dying woman and a pregnant woman in labor is a dying woman has no hope. A pregnant woman is expectant with hope. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It says in verse 23 that we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption again. Again, it says adoption, right? Verse 15, it says you have received the Spirit of adoption down here. It says eagerly awaiting for the adoption. It's the same word for sonship. the redemption of our bodies. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that sin is not hope. For, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. There's an expectancy that you are pregnant. with the hope of glory within you. See, there are many passages that, that in, in the Bible that, um, that tie suffering with glory together. Let's, let's just go through some of this, all right? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. That's verse 9, verse 10. For it was fitting for him, for whom all things, and by whom all things, in bringing many sons to glory, making the captain of their salvation perfect 
through sufferings. It's interesting, interesting two verses. It says, first, it says, Jesus, for the suffering of death, was crowned with glory. That's verse 9. Then verse 10, it says that uh, Jesus is bringing many sons to glory, made perfect through sufferings. You catch that? All right. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13, it says, But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, that you may be glad also with exceeding joy. And it goes on to say in, in 1 Peter uh, that when, when, you are, when you suffer because of Christ, the Spirit of glory comes on you. Um, now, 1 Peter chapter, again, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, it says, The elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am an, a fellow elder and the witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Again, that's the tie between suffering and glory. There's this, there, you know, so these are just some verses. There are a few other verses with, that, that ties in suffering and glory. That, 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 that is, that, that, that is this um, relationship. But it does say in First Peter that if you suffer for Christ, it, you get the spirit of glory, but not bec- but you don't get the spirit of glory when you suffer because of your fil- foolishness and you because you suffer your for your sin. Okay, so two different things, right? So so Peter was very explicit. If you suffer f- because of foolish de- decisions, that's your problem. But when you suffer for Christ then you experience the Spirit of glory coming on you. And and, and so this whole thing about groaning is also related to to glory. Because, you know, part of groaning is is really, uh, sorry, Uh, groaning is related to suffering, right? You groan, Creation grown because it's suffering, right? Part of our groaning is also because of suffering, right? It's like, a, groaning is a, like a natural response. Yeah, when, when, <laughs> when someone is in pain, you, you, you groan, right? And, and so, groaning is a deep inward response to suffering. It's personal, it's intense, it's... It's a deep agony that cannot put into words, but it's universal language. It's universal language. So humans grown, animals grown, all creation grown is universal language. But when the gl- when the glory of the sons and daughters of God is revealed, you know what? Glo- groaning will be swallowed up. By glory. But the the thing about our groaning is it is not it is not meant to be a response of despair. It is a response to pain and suffering, but it is not a resp- it is not for us men to be a response of despair. When we groan, we are not supposed to groan like a dying woman. We are growing as a pregnant woman in labor. Can you feel the difference? When we groan, The focus is not on death. It is on life. The focus is not on despair. 
It's on hope. Can you feel the difference? The past two years has been really, really tough for, for all of us. My question would be, my question is not have you been groaning. My question is how have you been groaning? Have you been groaning in despair or have you been groaning with hope? Have you been groaning in expectancy of new life or have you been groaning anticipating death? All of us have been groaning. The question, the question is not have you been groaning, the question is how have you been groaning? You know, in the Old Testament, uh, the psalmist talks about groaning a few times. Let me just, uh, yeah, l let me just look, turn, turn to that. Um, I just used two, two verses, all right? Psalms chapter 38, verse 8, it says, the psalmist says, I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil in my heart. And Psalm 32, verse 3, it says, the psalmist say, When I kept silent, all my bones grew old. Through my groaning all day long. Let, let me repeat that too, all right? Uh, Psalms 28 verse 8 I'm feeble and severely broken I groan because of the turmoil in my heart And Psalm 32 verse 3 When I kept silent All my bones grew old Through, the, through my groaning all day long And, and uh, uh, the two words for groaning uh, In these two verses are, uh, are The same family word Hebrew word Sa'ak Right, it's, it's literally the the same word in in two uh, how do I say it? two permutations, all right. Saak, which 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 can mean a cry of distress, a, a moan, or it, it also means uh, roaring like a lion. In fact, the the word saak that. That particular, uh, uh, it, in, in Psalm 38, verse 8, the, the way it is written, Sa'ak, you know, uh, that it appears only one time in, uh, it's only translated one time in, in, in the Old, Old Testament as, as, as grown, and 16 other times. It's translated as raw. Raw like a lion. Ah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so out of 17 times, one time uh, is in, in, in that form is 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 translated to groan, and 16 other times is translated to raw like a lion. <laughs> That's the way we are called to groan. It's a, it's a war cry. It's a war cry that the Lion of Judah calls forth his, his sons and daughters. It's, it's a war cry. You know, when, in... in, in, uh, in uh, 
Hosea 11. Let me, let me just go very quickly to that. Hosea 11. Hosea 11 verse 10. It says, They will walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion. And when he roars, his sons will come trembling from the west. They will come trembling. That, that, you see, there are two lions. There's the lion of Judah and there is the devouring lion, the devil, right? The question is, whose roar are you hearing? So, so many times we are so caught up with the noises of the world and the persecution and the problems... And, and the trouble and the tribulation and we, and we are get so messed up. We are hearing the roaring of the enemy, the like a devouring lion. And, and so we groan with despair. So we groan with hopelessness because we are hearing the wrong roar, and and in our hearts we are resounding with groans. Responding to the wrong roar. But you know what does the Bible say? In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. To Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Did you catch what Peter just said? He says, you hear the roar of the devouring lion, of the deceiving lion? Ignore it. Resist it. How do you resist? J James James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right? How many of you are familiar with that? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. <laughs> A lot of times, we try to resist the devil be before we submit to God. Yeah, that doesn't work. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When you submit to God, when you submit under God's authority, His authority is on you. You carry God's authority. And, and when the de devouring, deceiving lion roar, you roar back. <laughs> then you run away. You see that? You feel that? See, for me, right, the Word of God is not meant to be just read, but it is meant to be felt. That when I read, I'm not just devouring information, but I'm catching God's heart. And when you catch God's heart, everything changes. Amen. And so it, it says, <laughs> back to Paul, right, in Romans chapter 8. It says that there are three things groaning. Number one, the whole creation is groaning. Number two, the saints are groaning. And number three, the Holy Spirit in us is groaning. Question, when the Holy Spirit in us is groaning, is it? Is it because the Holy Spirit is suffering? Is it because, wow, oh, it's so painful to be in Patrick? Oh. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe some of my colleagues think, yeah, really, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Insocability. Yeah. 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 I. I. It, it, in the pastoral team, the, the 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 pastors groan. The extra groaning is from my lame jokes. <laughs> uh, so that that groaning is not biblical. <laughs> Doesn't lead to glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, let, let, okay, I need to recalibrate and see where I left off. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I, I, I got lost. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, let, let me uh, go back to Romans chapter 8. <laughs> okay, um, Romans chapter 8. Okay, verse 26. Verse 26. All right, verse 26. Uh, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us with our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. With, with groanings, it's, uh, literally, it would mean, uh, the, the, the word in Greek, alatletos, uh, would mean with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. You don't have the vocabulary to express it. Have you ever experienced this? A lot of times you experience emotions, you, ex- you experience things that you don't know, you, you, you just don't have the words to say it out. When, when, when someone is asking you, how are you feeling? You, 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 you just feel stuck. Right? But you're feeling so much. But you, you just can't express it out. Right? And, and that's the Holy Spirit's job to get you unstuck, to, to, to get it out of you. And, and, and it says that when the Spirit groans in us, what is He doing? Making intercession. Awesome. <laughs> That's my, my A1 Bible student right there. <laughs> yeah, in fact, if, if you go if you if you go on to um, verse 34, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 34, not only the spirit makes intercession, it, it, it says um, who is he? Who is he that condemns? It is Christ who died and therefore also risen? Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? That both the Spirit and the Son makes intercession for us. The 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 the, the Spirit makes intercession in us. The Son makes intercession in heaven for us. Amen. That um, there's this intercession going on even in Hebrews chapter seven twenty five. Uh, is a famous verse where where it says that Jesus it, it sits on the right hand of God making intercession for us. Right. You know Jesus groaned as well. Yes, even when on earth he was groaning. You, you know he did some healings by groaning? Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah, Pastor Hubert, the Bible scholar, will know. <laughs> like, like in, 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 in Mark chapter 7, verse 32 to 35, there, there was, was uh, this person who was, was deaf and dumb, who, who was deaf and couldn't speak properly. Right? Uh, so... So Jesus in verse 34, Jesus looked 
to heaven and he groaned. And he, he said to him, be opened. The word there, you know, uh, different translators, some, tra some translations, you, you look, it, it uh, translated to sigh, but that word is the same word, uh, stena, is stena zo. It's the same word in Romans chapter 8. It's in the same word as chapter Romans chapter 8. It's the word groaning. Again, in uh, John chapter 11, uh, when, when Lazarus was in the grave, you guys remember Lazarus? He was in the grave all wrapped up in the cave. And verse 33 uh, Jesus saw Mary weeping and grieving, and it says that Jesus groaned in the spirit and was, was troubled. Again, it's the same word. Uh, no, no, actually, this is a different word, a different Greek word, but it means, means groan as well. And he said, um, where, have you, where have you laid him? He says, Lord, come and see. Jesus went and he wept, and the Jews say, see how he loved him. And then verse 38, then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb. And then he, he, he cried out, Jesus, uh, not Jesus, Lazarus, come out. <laughs> yeah, so, so in, this, in this passage, it, it mentioned two times. He saw Mary cry. Then he goes, oh! Then he cries. Oh! Then he, he went to the grave. Then he goes again. Oh! Then, then, he, then he said, Lazarus, come out. I, I, I'm thinking, why? If you know that you, are, you can raise Lazarus, right? Why all the drama, Jesus? You, why you groan and moan and cry? <laughs> have, have you all ever thought about that? Surely Jesus had the faith to raise Lazarus from the dead, right? Then why was Jesus groaning? Was he praying? Definitely there was an expression of his intercession. Definitely, that, that was an expression of something very deep. You know what? It's my belief that Jesus groans for each one of us. That passion is felt so deep. That he feels your suffering, he feels your pain. And he groans for you. He feels your heart. And he's waiting for you to feel his heart. That, that the passion of Jesus is for you. And that's why he is at the right hand of God, making intercession for each one of us 24-7. Because His heart is constantly reaching out to you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, spiritual groaning is connecting with the Spirit of God and feeling His heart and allowing His, his heart to lead your groaning. And one expression of that is, it, 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 is really praying in tongues. 
one expression. I'm not saying it's the only expression. And there, you know, in, in the past, in the Pentecostal movement, uh, that that in Pentecostal history there have been people intercessors and and, and people who really they use the word travail. And the word travailing, the phrase travailing prayer, that they labor in the spirit by, by just praying, by groaning and mourning or praying in tongues. But, uh, but as they do that, it's, it's the, 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 but the big the thing is, as they pray, what they are doing is they're connecting with God's spirit and God's heart. And they're feeling God's heart. As they pray, so it's not it's not about how loud you pray. It's not even about how badly you cry. Okay, because you can all that do all that right. You know why why young right? <laughs> you can you can you can put up a show or you can you can you can uh, even. Like work yourself into a frenzy praying and not connect with God's heart. And, and the fact is, there are, you know, there, there, there are many people who, 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 have, who, who have done that. I mean, I, I definitely, there, 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 there were times where I'm praying, I can be praying very loudly, very dramatically, and, and, and even in, in the closet, as in, Privately, right? Not not public for people to see. Yeah, privately praying very loud, and but I'm just working myself up, not connecting with God's heart, and that's missing the point. But when you when you allow the spirit, when you connect the, with the spirit of God, and you yield to Him. And you allow his passion to take over, his burden to take over as you pray. And even as it, it, and, and if, if, if you start praying in tongues, you might not know what you are praying for. Or you may not know the exact uh, thing you are praying for. But that burden comes and you pray. It's a, it's a whole different realm. It's a whole different realm. And I, I have, have times when I was praying in tongues, and 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 I and 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 I begin to know that hey, I'm praying for a certain nation. I'm praying for a sp- certain thing, and I allow God to just lead me. It's just very very different. It's just very very. Now I I'm I'm one who can pray in tongues very mindlessly. Like I can walk around praying in tongues, like. Right, and just multitask and pray in tongues, but that's very, very different when you connect with the heart of God and you pray in tongues. I, I understand that not everybody uh, in the audience or not everybody uh, on online uh, pray in tongues. So, so if you you don't, please don't <laughs> don't just uh, lose me. All right, but. It, <laughs> It's about connecting with the heart of God. You can pray in English and still connect with the heart of God. Right? But it's allowing to, His heart to capture your heart as you pray and, and let that be your groaning. Let His Spirit take over. And that groaning will grow into glory. It, that groaning is, is, is in the spirit. It's you travailing and pushing and pushing and, and buffing forth something in the spirit, buffing forth the glory that, that God has for you. And so, again, all of us groan. 
The question is not, are we groaning? But how are we groaning? And so, Father God, I pray that you would just encourage every one of us this morning that as we groan, that we are allowing your roar to roar through our spirits and through our voices. There is not a groan of giving up or giving in to the, to, to the tribulations of life. But it's a groan of glory. It's, it's giving out the glory shouts. It's a groan that is expressing out your heart, your passion. It, it, that we groan with, with your grace empowering our hearts. We groan with hope. We groan with expectancy. We groan with faith. We groan allowing you to birth forth the miraculous in our lives. And so in Jesus' name, we break every assignment of an enemy that tries to abort, to abort our destinies in our lives. And in Jesus' name, we bless every person to reconnect with the Spirit's groaning. The roar of the Lion of Judah. That we groan with grace into glory. Glorious freedom of the sons and daughters of the living God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, um, I'm waiting for whoever is supposed to do announcements to come and take over. <laughs> but, uh, yep. <laughs> while, we, while we wait for uh, the announcement pastor to come. <laughs> we wait with eager expectation. With glorious groaning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, come, come, come. <laughs> All right. All right, let's give a round of applause for Pastor Patrick. All right. I, I hope there was a lot of glory at the end, not groaning. I, I saw a woman groaning just now. <laughs> Pregnant. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And that was a really great message. All right. Uh, right now, it's time to take out our time offering. So for those of you who are online and you'd like to give, there are three different ways you can give uh, towards the church. For those of you who are on-site, you know, the usher will be ready to uh, go around to collect the offering. All right. So for those of you who are online, you know, we, we have a QR code and it will be also flash here for those who are on-site and you can give electronically to a church using the internet banking app. Number two, you can also give through uh, a check payable to Sokability. And number three, you can give through PayPal, which is the link will be uh, shown on the Facebook Live. All right. But we want to emphasize to everybody that, you know, um, if Sokability is not your home church, please do keep your tie to your local church. But if you want to sow above and beyond what we're doing here, our ministry, you know, our, our, our preaching sermon that has been encouraging you and and being blessed by it, and, and you like to give towards the church, um, feel free to do so. Be really blessed to receive them. All right? So let's pray for this morning offering. Father, we just thank you that, you know, we, we, we that in the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And we give because we are overflowing 
with your blessing. We give because we're overflowing with your love. And it's just a natural response that we want to give. So Father, I just bless everyone who give this morning. And I bless that, you know, every every dollar, every cent, you know, it is going to be multiplied towards the kingdom of God. So we bless all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. All right. Uh, announcement. All right, so this is uh, next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're still having a service. That will be the last service of 2021, all right? So this will be like our Christmas service, okay? So we have no Christmas play, okay? We have no Christmas play, okay? <laughs> but hopefully, maybe we need to pray for Pastor Patrick. Maybe 2022, he will do a Christmas play. Amen. He'll be the director, director of drama. Wow, man, we pray. We, we have one year to pray for next year. But anyway, this is our Christmas service. You know, for those of you who have been attending our Christmas service for the past two years, you know it will be really fun. You know, we all have games. You know, we have Christmas carol. We have an encouraging message, all right? So I encourage everyone uh, to kind of sh show up at this event. It's going to be really fun, all right? And there will be a message. But beyond that, you know, it is really that season that we want to gather together um, because, you know, of what, because of the birth of Jesus. All right. Next event will be this soaking and revival. Okay. We're going to have a last soaking and revival. And this will be really fun and really uh, exciting because we want to soak in the presence of God and welcome the new year. Amen. So for those of you uh, who are new to what soaking revival, that, that is literally the core and DNA of Soakability Church. We started as a church that really loved the presence of God and we will worship for long. All right, so this one will be like, same thing, it will be like three hours of worship. Okay, like three hours of worship. It will be really, really, you know, good, really, really refreshing, really, really deep into His presence. All right. So if you're someone say, "Oh, I don't like, I don't, I, I cannot, you know, stand long worship." Okay, probably this this might not be the the most exciting event for you, you know. But for those of you who have been with us, who knows our DNA, knows our culture, this is a uh, event that is that has no program. All the programs are decided by the Holy Spirit. For those of you who have showed up for our previous soaking and revive, you know that there's no program. The only agenda is to worship Jesus. The only agenda is to see Him face to face. Amen. So this will be on the thirty first. All right, December, which is the last day of 2021, and we'll be in the afternoon. All right, so we will be giving out uh, the link uh, next week for people to sign up. All right, so this is the same thing. Uh, this is a ticket, uh, ticketing system. All right, so each ticket will admit one person. All right, so we'll send out the link next week. All right. And I think that's all for the announcement already. All right. Um, any other announcement? Did I miss out? Good. All right. Okay, awesome. Well, I guess today's service ends earlier, which means we can go for a, a, a good lunch and hang out. All right, so let's all pray. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for this morning that we can come to worship, we can come to receive your word. And Father, as we leave this place, prepares, uh, prepare our heart, Lord. You know, Lord, I just pray that as we leave, we really rediscover the beauty, the beauty of Christmas. That Christmas is not just another once a year event where I have to buy present and wrap present and give present. But rather, you are the best present. You are the best gift. And Father, I just pray for everyone as we leave this place that we will go on this journey next week that we will rediscover the beauty the purity of what Christmas means. And I just pray, you know, for family connections, reconciliation, that Christmas is a time for beautiful gathering, not just feasting, but sharing heart to heart. So Father, we just thank you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for those of you who are on site. All right, that's the end of our service. And for those who are online, thank you so much for joining us from around the world. We are blessed to have you. So stay tuned for next week. We have the 
uh, Soaking Revival and we also have our last Sunday service of 2021. Alright, so bless you all and see you all.